In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a contact flow in Amazon Connect. We are logged in and we're on the home page and we're going to go to the panel on the left hand side. In the panel, we're going to look for routing. After you click on routing, you want to click on flows. Once the page opens up in flows, you're going to go over to the right hand side and click create flow. Once you click on create flow, it's going to open up the workspace for where you can create your new flow. As you can see on the workspace, it says entry. Entry is the point at which a phone call begins. You can think of entry as the phone ringing. On the left hand side, you have the block library. That is where you will find all of the actions and interactions that you want your phone to be able to do. So to set up a simple phone line, I'm going to start with a play prompt block. I'm going to simply drag and drop the play prompt block from the block library over to my workspace. Then I'm going to drag a line from entry to the play prompt block. Then I'm going to open the play prompt box by clicking on the three dots on the right hand side. You will then see a menu in which you will select edit settings. Once you open the settings, you will want to name your block. Then scroll down and choose text to speech or chat text and select set manually. In the text box, you're going to write what you want the callers to hear when they call your 1-800 number. So if you want them to hear, hello, welcome to, or thank you for calling ABC Company, here is where you would write that. So after you write that, you're gonna hit save, and then it's gonna bring you back to your workspace. Notice on the play prompt box, it says success and it's green and it says error and that's red. Those are going to be your connections. So I'm going to move this play prompt box out the way so I can have room for my other prompts. The second prompt that I always put up there is the disconnect box. And the third box that I put up there is another play prompt box. This time I'm going to use the play prompt box as an error message in case there's an error. This makes connecting everything a little bit easier. So I'm going to open up the play prompt box that I just put up there for error and I'm going to name it error then I'm going to scroll down to text to speech or chat text. And then I'm going to type in my error message. And then I'm going to hit save. So then I'm going to create a connection from my error play prompt box to the disconnect box. Notice I am only connecting where it says error or the red selection to the disconnect box. The reason I do it this way is because if there's an error with the error prompt box, then the best course of action would be to, to disconnect the whole flow. So now I'm going to take the green arrow and then I'm going to connect it back to the intro box, creating a loop where if they successfully make it through the error message, it would send them back to start over at the entry point. So now we have established what would happen if there were an error during the phone call. So now I'm going to add another prompt. This prompt box is a little different. This is the get customer input box. This is the prompt that you use when you want your phone line to have options like press one for customer service, press two for billing, press three for other, and so forth. So you need to write each command one line at a time. Press one for whatever on one line, and then on the second line, press two for whatever, and then so forth. So once you have entered your commands, 
Then you scroll down to add a condition. You have to add a condition for this to work. So if you have one, two, and three options, you need to put one and then add a condition, two, and then add a condition, three. So now that you have done that, you see that your Get Customer Input box now says press one, press two, and press three. Timeout, default, and error. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the error to the error box. Then I'm going to create a connection from timeout back to the intro box. The reasoning for this is if the customer has taken too long to press an option, the loop will send them back to the intro where they will get an opportunity to press their option again. Now I'm going to go back to the block library and I'm going to find the block that says check hours of operation. Then I'm going to take the connections from the get customer input box, press one, press two, press three and default. And I'm going to connect all of those to check hours of operation. I'm going to click the three dots in the right hand corner to edit the block. I'm going to scroll down and check the box next to specific hours. Then from the drop down box, I'm going to choose my basic hours and hit save. So like always, I'm going to connect my error first to the error box. And then I'm going to create a new play prompt box. I'm going to open and edit that box and I'm going to name it after hours. I'm going to scroll down to text to speech or chat text. And then I'm going to write, you have reached us after hours, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to hit save. So now I'm going to drag another box from the block library this time this box is called the transfer to phone number box. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so I can see everything. And then I'm going to take the green success arrow from the after hours box and connect it to the disconnect box. You could have it loop back to the beginning at the intro, but I'd rather have it hang up the phone after it tells them that they called during after hours. So finally, we're going to open up the transfer to phone number box. So we just give this box a name, scroll down to transfer to, find the country code, then we're going to type in the phone number that we want to transfer to. Then we're going to scroll down to more options. At the bottom, they have options where you can have the caller ID sent to you, or you can have the caller ID name sent to you, or you can even type in a name that you want to come up when the person calls from this 1-800 number. So we're going to hit save. And the last arrow we have is the error arrow coming from the transfer to phone number box. So I'm just going to move the box down a little and zoom out to make it easier to see the connections. And then I'm going to hook that arrow onto the error box. Now, it appears that all of my connections are made. Please note, that you cannot have any loose connections or you will not be able to publish this contact flow. And upon double checking, I see that I forgot to connect the default connection to the hours. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now that everything is connected, I'm going to go ahead and name my contact flow over in the left hand corner at the top. Then I'm going to go ahead and click save over in the right hand corner at the top. Now that I have saved my contact flow, I'm going to go ahead and publish it. Please note that if your contact flow is not set up correctly, 
it will not allow you to publish it and you will see an error message. Another thing to note is publishing your contact flow here does not connect it to your phone line. You have to make an extra step outside of here to use this contact flow on your phone line. And that's it. That's how you make a simple contact flow in Amazon Connect.